Okay, we are going to make some iridescent envelopes. Um, from my stash, I had, um, from my original stash video, I had picked out some used coffee filters, I had picked out some dryer sheets, and I had picked out some cereal bags. So all three of those is what we're going to need to make these envelopes. I'll go through the supplies we're going to need in just a second. Show you what we're making. I think these are really pretty. Um, I don't know if the camera is picking up the shimmer. Can you see the shimmer? They're real iridescent once you get them sewn. And they're see-through, but they're super sturdy. Um, I made two different versions of the envelope for this project. You are going to need a sewing machine. Um, you could actually probably hand stitch this if you don't have a machine. Use You could just, you know, do a running stitch and have it a little more, you know, you could actually do that with this. Or, if you found a good glue, it's Finding plastic to plastic glue is a little tricky sometimes, so you kind of, maybe um, E6000 would probably be a good one, uh, plastic to plastic. I'm not sure about tacky glue. I've never used a tacky glue plastic to plastic, so I'm not really sure. And you know what? I knocked my glue stick off. Let me grab another one because I do need that. Um, all right. We're going to need a glue stick. We're going to need a stamp. We were allowed one stamp in this challenge. This is stamp I chose. One ink. We could use a, a makeup, like a used makeup sponge thing. So we're going to need that. Um, these are little scraps of papers that I've collected throughout this project. So I've got my little scrap pile there. Um, we're going to need scissor. Um, uh, an a brush for application for glue, just an old chip brush. You're going to need a button. That was one of my, uh, um, my button that I had, the shank was messed up on it, so I'll just use this button as a substitute for right now, and I'll see if I can fix my button. You're going to need two used dryer sheets, just the used dryer sheets, um, a needle, and some of your thread, like you're using in your sewing machine, the same thread for the challenge. Um, you're going to need some uh, a used coffee filter. Now this coffee filter looks like it's been dyed. It really hadn't. This is one of those natural colored ones that wasn't white to begin with. And this is where the, actually I used for tea, not coffee, but um, this is where the it collects around the edge. Okay. And you're going to use a cereal bag. You're going to want another big cereal bag. Now, rarely are you going to hear me say this. You're going to name Mod Podge. <laughs> I usually preach and say, don't use Mod Podge on this. Don't use Mod Podge. This time, we actually want plastic. So we want to use the matte medium Mod Podge. Okay? We actually want to use that this time. And then I've got my calendar set aside for imagery, for the little image on the closure for this. And um, what we're going to do first is, this time we actually want a plastic. So use, you know, protect your surface. You are going to take your Mod Podge and coat your coffee filter. Now, this is going to slightly change the color of your coffee filter. If you're using these brown ones, it actually darkens them when it dries. Um, I'm not sure why, but it just does. Um, but that's, you know, I'm fine with that. One of the reasons why we're coating this, for one, we want durability, and the plastic is going to be durable. For two, where all this dark edge is, this has been exposed to heat. This part of the paper is really compromised. It gets um, really um, crunchy on the edges sometimes, and it'll just crumble. Well, sometimes you want that look, but for this, I don't particularly want that look. 
Um, so I'm going to coat my Mod Podge. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, you, you want an extra piece of paper. I used a piece of this. You could use uh, the coffee filter for both of these for the flap. For this flap, I did use a piece of that brown paper. But you could easily just use a piece of the coffee filter. You don't need a separate piece of paper. But if you want one, you can. Coat that. You are going to ooh, let that dry. Once it's dry, you could you, you can use your heat tool or your you know whatever on here. I'm not going to do that. Once it's dry, flip it over, repeat on the other side until it's dry. Okay. I already have some prepared. So about the magic of YouTube, I have a couple already done. <laughs> Now, look at this. See how shiny that is? This is why I don't use Mod Podge in like a, um, let's say an art journal. I'm doing some collage in there. And after I'm done, and I'm sure everything is dry, and I've closed my book up, and one day I come back and my book is stuck, and it's pulling everything off. That's because this has a plasticity to it. This is not your kind of thing you need to use for collage. You need, actually, if you're going to do something like that, you need to get yourself a better matte medium. Now, it doesn't have to be gel. I just prefer gel. doesn't have to be Liquitex. doesn't have to be Golden. can be another brand. But I will tell you the two that I will not use in a finer art or junk journal, I will not, or, or a, um, like a collage or my art journal, I will not use Mod Podge, and I will not use um, the Simply, I think it's Simply brand at Walmart. Both of them have the shiny, this is supposed to be matte. Do you see that? It is shiny plastic. This has been glued down with matte, with, uh, matte medium. Oh, let me go in. This is glued down with matte medium. You have no shine. This was glued down with the Liquitex. You have no, there is no shine and no sticky. You can see side by side the plastic difference. That this plastic piece here has no shine and it has matte medium on top and underneath as a glue. But yet this one, that's why I'm always, you know, differentiating between glues. So, I want you to, now this time we want plastic, so that's why I'm saying, you know, kind of beware, you know, what you're doing there. So, once we've got those covered and they're dried, I just did a couple of them up. We're going to take our, let's see, I'm going to stick my needle in that sponge so I don't lose it. Take your, this is just the cereal bag that I've opened all the way up. I'm going to take some of this plastic. And line up my little sheet on it. And I'm going to cut the plastic to fit the sheet or thereabouts, you know, close as I can. Oops. It's kind of slippery. Kind of slippery. And I'm going to go ahead and do both of these at the same time. Kind of line that up. Hold it down. And you can always trim this up when you're done. So you don't have to really worry if it's just exact. And this is what gives it that iridescent sheen is the plastic underneath. If you were just making the envelope from this, these are, they're fairly sturdy, but they are eventually going to rip. And I think you need the under layer. And this makes it really iridescent and pretty. So we're going to take a little bit of our glue. I need, maybe I need to put something under there so you can even see that. Put that under there so maybe you can see it. It's kind of all invisible. I'm going to use a little bit of glue here on the, see if I can go in and move things so you can see what I'm doing. 
on this piece of plastic here. This is just for tacking. Come on, glue. I would grab a glue that's out. Why would I even put a glue stick that's empty in my drawer? Deary me. Let me try this one. I don't even know why that was in there. Okay, I think this one might be new. Okay. <laughs> Take two. I'm going to smear some glue along this edge. And this is just to tack this and hold it in place. So that I can stitch this one area. And this is also a good reason to designate needles because sometimes you do have to use glue for tacking. And if you do, you're going to want to, you know have a needle that's not going to try to be gummed up to sew your, you know, fabrics. Okay. I've got both of those tacked on there. So, move that out of the way. I'm going to bring my machine back. I'm going to put that button. I'm scared I'm going to lose it. I'll lay it up on the shelf. Okay, let's scoot my machine back in here. I've already got this set on a zigzag stitch, and on the end where I glued it, I'm just going to stitch right across that edge. You know, what's taking you so long? I have to take off my shoe. Is this weird? I sew barefoot. I don't, well, I'm barefoot most of the time. <laughs> my needle down, go up a little bit, max stitch, and then just go across, and I've got this on a medium speed. So that it won't slip so I can just guide it gently you don't want to pull it you know don't yank it through your machine and stretch it just let it kind of feed through naturally to the end and you're done with that one and I'm going to do the same thing to the other one Go ahead and crease your envelope in your, your plastic. I'll just kind of make sure everything's smooth. Now that I've got this folded, remove that piece of plastic, I'm going to take my glue and I've got my stitch side down this side up and I'm gonna again use that glue on that back piece of plastic between the plastic and the dryer sheet and just tack that. Hold it for a second and try to tack that so that it'll sew and everything is there's not going to be any buckling. If I've already folded it and gotten all the wrinkles out I'm not going to have any weird buckling and that's the point of doing that. Um, Move that one out. This this little sheet's a little wrinkly. If your dryer sheets are too wrinkly, put them between between some, um, you know, like a um, parchment paper, and you can iron them and get them. Don't iron the plastic, <laughs> just the dryer sheet, before you use it. If you, if it's wrinkly. So for one flap, I used the top of a coffee filter, kind of like mm, that stained edge. I'm just going to hold it to my back piece here and see how far up I need to go with it. You know, so it lines up with the edges with my corner here and my corner here. And I'm going to fold it over and see if it's, if it's not deep enough, you can pull it down. If it's not, if your flap didn't look deep enough, like I don't think that looks deep enough to me. So I'm going to pull it down. Let's see, I'll measure and tell you how far I did this one. I cut this one two and a half inches. So that gives me a good, I went down two and a half inches on that one from the middle to about right there. So I'm going to cut that off at about that two and a half inch mark right above my plastic. I'm just holding that on there to kind of keep it level. I'm not cutting it. Okay, I went down about two and a half inches on that one. I want 
this side to be my outside. I'm going to take a little bit of that glue and put it down my edge in the film. There we go. And I'm going to place that on my, on top. I've got the plastic on bottom, drawer sheet in the middle, this on top. It's okay if it extends off the edges, you can trim that. I'm going to make sure I've kind of got it level by turning it over because I can see through all this and see if I've kind of got it what I feel like is pretty even. I feel like I do. I'm going to hold that down with the glue. Now I'm going to stitch across that. I'm going to trim this straight up on both sides. Just straight up from my plastic there. I'm going to bring my machine back in a little bit. I've still got this on my zigzag stitch. And I'm going to stitch across that flap. And I think on this one, I didn't stitch around the other one. I think I'll go all the way around this flap. Now, take this. Fold it back up to the sides where it was on your natural crease, and you should have your flap on there. Okay? I'll try to cut some of this mess off. I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to stitch down here, and We'll see. I think I'll start on this side because I do want to go around my flap. So I'm going to start on this side. I'm going to stitch all the way down. Now, I don't know if you can see. I have a little bit of a plastic issue there. Before I do that, I'm going to trim that a little bit. Because I don't want that extra plastic sticking out and I don't want to stitch on it. So I'm going to go down here all the way around my flap and back. And that's going to seal this envelope. Yeah, and I, again, I'm just using my um, uh, zigzag stitch towards. So now I've got my envelope. Fold this down and crease it for it to close. Now I have some. See, I got, I don't know if you can tell, I've got some ungainly edges. So with this closed and not cutting into my stitching, I'm going to trim that up. And this looks really cute if you're using a um, pinking shear and you like pink the edges. If you're using a pinking shear, it looks really good. Um, and that is what we're going to do to make our envelope. Now you can decorate this any way you want to. I decided to use... A coffee filter and make a flower that the envelope tucks behind it. So we're going to do that with a raw coffee filter. This one has not had, you can tell the difference. This, whoops, this is a raw one. This is the Mod Podge. Way different. I'm going to use a raw one for this. Okay, so for this, now we, I'm going to have another tutorial. So we're going to be cutting this apart. I want you to save these extra pieces, okay? We are going to fold this in half. Okay? Fold it in half again. I'm keeping my point to my right. So I keep up with it because I want to keep up with where my point is. Then I'm going to fold it again. And then I'm going to fold it again until I have a cone shape, a triangle, a sharp triangle. Okay, so for the first part of it, I'm going to go down about, I'm going to say about an inch, or about an inch and a quarter. I'm going to say inch and a quarter, okay? Cut that straight off. Now, we are not using this. We're going to use this in another tutorial. So save this round piece, okay? I've got another tutorial to use that for. So we're just going to put that aside. Then you're going to go down about, let's see, how big are my petals there? This one's about an inch. You're going to cut off about an inch or a little, maybe an inch and an eighth. Cut it straight off. Okay. 
save this centerpiece. This is also for another tutorial. Save this circle. Save this. Just put those aside if you're going to come back. If you're not, get creative with them. Make something with them. We want this little middle piece. Now, I'm going to leave it folded. I'm going to take my scissor and um, I'm just going to, this is where I cut the tip off. This was the top. I'm going to cut just a petal shape with it. You know, just a half circle, kind of like that. And I left some of the fold here on each side. I've left about, is that a half an inch of a fold? Yeah. I've left about a half an inch, gone up about a half an inch on both sides, and I've just held it, you know, my finger there and gone from finger to finger. That one's a little pointy. Get that off there. Okay? So we want that. We want this loopity one. The loopity one. Okay? This is where you need your needle and thread, and I stuck mine in that sponge. There it is. Um, thread a needle and thread. And I'm going to use a little piece just an itty piece of masking tape. Um, you can use tape, glue, whatever. I just want to hold the end of my thread while I'm sewing this, okay? Just go into your inside of here and in and out, in and out, in and out, you know, just a running stitch around the edges here. I suppose you could do a gathering stitch on your machine, but I think it it's just, just as quick to do it this way. Now, when I get to my tail where my knot is, right here on the inside, I'm taking a piece of tape, I'm catching that thread right there, and I'm folding that tape over. That's not going to show. But it, what it does is that when I'm pulling and gathering, my thread is not going to zip through it and tear, okay? That's what I want. And I'm just going to kind of gather as I go, gently gathering that up and go all the way around to where I started. Now I'm just pushing you know, my needle through there in and out, in and out. I'm not being neat. I hope this tutorial is not getting too long. I didn't look at my clock. I may need to split it. Maybe part of the signatures and part of it may be this tutorial. We'll see. Okay, I've gone back through that tape. And you're going to gently pull. Don't pull too tight. Don't, you know, you kind of need to gather it back toward where you started as you're pulling to get it even. Kind of want to get it even. And once you've got it how you like it, I'm just tightening up. And you can, we'll move that around a little bit. Now I want you to take a stitch, go kind of over to the other side, and take a stitch down, and a stitch back up, and a stitch down. We're just stitching kind of a little X. This is just going to hold the flower while we're finishing it off. Um, we will use some glue. Um, there we go. Now, where's my button? Button, button, I'll put it on the shelf. Okay, from the back side, come up through your button. Give it a couple of stitches on there. Ay, ay, ay. I just stuck myself through there. Come on. Man, that is not wanting to go through. And it is sticking me, not the... Let's see if I can go through a different part. There we go. I don't know what the deal was. It's too gathered there or something. Didn't really want to do. Okay. I'm going to go through that button a couple times. If I can get it through... Ouch. Knot it off. Just do a little knot back there. Oh, so fiddly. 
and cut that string off. Then I can kind of play with my petals. You can go in there and kind of separate them and fluff them because I kind of flattened them out while I was tugging and you know you can kind of floof it up. This is kind of a little rustic flower but you get kind of a little daisy effect with it. Now you're going to want to take a piece of your I've got strings hanging from me a piece of your scrap um, I'm going to use a piece of this calendar right here it's kind of fairly stiff and just cut yourself a circle a small circle to go on the back you could use a circle punch but remember I'm doing a challenge here so I'm trying to stay in my rules that's kind of more of an oval but it doesn't matter just something you know we're going to take some glue I'm going to grab this tacky glue because it's sitting here you want to glue this to the back all this is going to do is help you secure it's going to secure the flower and it's going to help um, secure it to the um, envelope I'm just going to place it on there like that and we're going to set this aside and let it dry while we work on our second envelope and we'll come back to it. Okay, that's all we're going to do on this right now. Just let that dry. Let's put that to the side. Let's look at our second envelope. For this one, I did a piece of the brown paper. I'm not going to do it with the brown paper on here. I think I'm going to do it with the, I'm going to use a piece of this instead of the brown paper. I'm going to go back and Mod Podge this brown paper because it's not super um, sturdy. So I'm going to go ahead and, and cut a piece of this the same size as I did this. And I'm going to have just about enough to do that. So this is a, about, let's measure it and I'll tell you what it is. Mine is about three and a quarter by six and a quarter. Cut it off there. I'm not worried so much about the sides. I'll get those in a second. I'll stick that back for something else. This is this is a little crooked. I'm gonna trim it a little bit just to get it a little bit more straight. Okay. Ink up my stamp. I don't have to let this dry a minute. And I over stamped that other one. This stamp is not exactly the greatest. It stamps real heavy in some areas and not in others. And I try to put the pressure on it right, and sometimes it does right, and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just going to take it and do some over stamping in areas with different pieces. Got a flower right there on the corner. And get a better, ah, something sticky on there. A little bit better image there. See if I can get any other secondary stamping on that. Okay, I like that better. I am going to stick that down. Now, I'll go straight up from this and cut. I have my flap cut. There. Okay, get rid of this. Now we are ready to stitch. Okay? Ready to stitch. Pull the sewing machine back. We're going to stitch across this right here. Again, I've got it set up with my. Um, zigzag. We are ready to sew the sides. Folding it back up. Just going straight down the sides. I'll just do a quick 
straight stitch around this just to give it a little bit of a different look. When I'm coming to a corner, I'm lifting my presser fit. My needle is down inside my paper. I'm lifting the presser fit. I'm shifting the paper, putting the presser fit back down. Okay, let's make a little, this is just a little collage that I did for the front of here. And all I did was take, let's see, I took a piece of brown paper. You're just going to take your scraps, okay? I'm just going to take the brown paper and my ruler and I'm going to rip myself a little piece of paper here, okay? I've got that. I've got a little bit of my, let's see, this is a piece of tea bag paper. Um, I thought I had a piece of the dryer sheet. I guess that's, grab this one. Okay. I cut a little piece of the dryer sheet, just, you know, you don't have to be neat, don't have to be tidy, these are not neat and tidy. I layered a piece of paper, a piece of my dryer sheet, a piece of tea bag, I used a piece of this brown paper that was in my stash. And a little bit of the text. Let's see, where is a text piece? Oh, it's something down here that maybe has got the text on it. Grab my paper clip with that stuff in it. I've got a paper clip that I have all this stuff clipped together. Oh, when I wasn't even on camera, was I? Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to tear down a piece of the paper that had text on it, and probably, this is probably big enough here. I'm not doing anything specifically neatly. I think I want a bigger piece of that than that little piece there. Get a, a bigger hunk. Let me go out a little bit, and then I can come back in when I'm... larger chunk of that. Okay. Kind of crisscrossing those two. I'll come back in. A little bit. Kind of crisscrossing those two. I'm layering a piece of tea bag on there. I'm layering a hunk of this brown paper. I'm layering a piece of text paper. Kind of put it off to the side. And then where I got my image is the back of my calendar. Uh, don't knock everything off back in that window. Then I have to climb in and behind and under and around to the back of my calendar has these little icon pieces, you know, that show what's in the calendar. So I'm going to cut one of those. Let's see, which one do I want to use? I'm going to cut one of those little images um, to put on here. I, kinda, I don't know if I want to use those butterflies or I kind of think that maybe that little hummingbird. This also has the little quotes on it, so I've been trying to be careful and not Make sure those don't get thrown away. Um, I don't know. That bluebird is so vivid. It's more vivid. I'm thinking the bluebird. So I'm just going to trim this little image out. And I'm going to trim it above that little border. Okay. That's what I need to do this little thing. I'm going to use my sponge and my ink. Get all my papers here. I'm going to ink this one by just rubbing my edges along my ink pad here to get the edges of the center image. 
It's got a little piece of paper sticking off. That just gets the edges, okay? Then I've got my brown paper. My I've kind of got everything. Let me make it kind of a little crookedy. I'll come in so you can see that. It's just it's just holding everything together, basically. Plopping that on top. Where everything kind of has a an area where it sticks together. So I'm going to put this in my machine, and just like I did this one, I'm just going to zigzag down it. Okay. And if anything's loose, I'll lift it up and put some glue on the back side. I don't even back stitch on this. I'm just going to go down it, catch it, and that's it. Just enough. And I'm going to leave a little bit of the threads. I don't mind a little bit of the threads on this. So I just have a little cluster there. If anything, see that's loose right there. I'm just going to take some glue and put some glue behind there and catch anything that's loose. I can just lift and catch because that piece of paper is definitely not in there. Now it will be. And I'm going to do that on the back, too, where this kind of flips apart. Whoops. Where this flips apart, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue back here, too. Okay? So I've kind of got that all sandwich. Let's widen back out a little bit. I've got that all sandwich now. I'm going to lay this down on my grungy paper. And I'm going to take my ink pad and my sponge. Let's see. Let me move everything. This is difficult when I'm not used to doing it like this. Okay. My, there we go. Grungy sponge, ink pad. I'm just going to hit over all this. Not in any manner. I'm even hitting the middle just enough to dull it down a little bit. Doesn't have to be in any certain way. Now I'm going to take that, and here's the front of my envelope. I'm going to want that to go right there in the center, where that flap will come down and tuck behind there. Before I do that, I'm going to take that grungy sponge again and just lightly hit, whoops, hit these edges of this envelope. Um, I'm going to center this where I think I want it. Hold it with your flap up. So you're going to know to put glue here. Don't put glue up there. Okay? So I'm going to put glue here. And because we have this dryer sheet, this is going to stick. You know, glue doesn't, some glues don't tend to like to stick to plastic, but this does because it, um, it likes the netting stuff. Fold it down and press in place. And when that dries, you can wait this if you want to. You know, sit something on it and wait it. When it dries, your envelope simply flaps open from behind there. Let's go back to this one. Our flower envelope. Go back to it. Let's grunge it up a little. If, then I'm going to do the same premise with my flower. Oh, I didn't grungy my flower. I forgot to grungy my flower. This I'm just going to kind of pounce this sponge all over it and get it all yucky, kind of dirty it up. You don't have to. I want to darken mine down. And just catch all those little wrinkles and stuff and kind of make it darker. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing. Pick where you want, which part of your flower you want, petals. Make sure this circle is right below there, but make sure that your petals will hold that envelope. So that's about where mine's going to be. I'm going to put glue all on this circle that we created on the back and line my petals up. And I'm putting mine where it, the envelope slips between the edge of these petals and that circle. 
okay, that it slips between. So that's where I want mine, and I'm going to let it dry. And so now I have some sweet little envelopes that I can do some keepsakes in. Um, And I hope you have enjoyed this. Sorry it's getting a little babbling toward the end. I think I'm just getting tired. And I will see you back for another fun embellishment tutorial. Thanks for joining me.